As a quarterback, is it footwork? Is it passing mechanics? If it's bad, can you fix it? Can you make it better? Today, I am going to break some myths and tell you what you need to know to be an accurate passer from the pocket. Some coaches aren't going to like it. Some coaches are going to love it. As a quarterback, you need to know, and it's coming up right now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, former 11-year pro quarterback and world champion and also quarterback's coach here at EliteAthletesTV.com. Today, we're going to talk about passing mechanics and footwork, how they interrelate, and we're going to break a bunch of myths out there from coaches that I've heard talk about from around the country. Some pretty famous guys have talked about some stuff that just doesn't make sense to me. So we're going to talk about how to improve your game from the pocket today. First, if you love football, if you love talking quarterback play, if you love talking about X's and O's, you're going to want to subscribe to the channel and make sure that you ring that bell. That way you get notified every time we have new stuff come out. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to learn how to operate from the pocket as a quarterback. And leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Any questions, any comments, anything you'd like to learn. Because our goal here at Elite Athletes TV is to help as many young athletes, and in my case, as many young quarterbacks as possible. So share this video out. Get it to your teammates, your friends, your family, anybody who you think can benefit from this. Because, like I said, we're trying to help out young athletes improve in their knowledge and their performance in the game. Now, let's talk about quarterback play. How much does footwork matter? I have heard coaches tell quarterbacks that their passing mechanics is all about footwork. It's just footwork, just footwork. And so they constantly work footwork. I have heard other quarterback coaches tell kids that it's all about their passing mechanics, how you hold the ball, where you have it up here, how you release the ball. And there are literally schools of thought out there that say it's just footwork. Don't work on anything else, just work on footwork. Or you have to have absolutely perfect passing mechanics or it's not even worth starting. I'm here to tell you, as a recovering bad mechanical passer who had to improve his own mechanics, that it's a combination of both of those things. And there's some cheats to it that a lot of coaches don't know about because they haven't gone through the process of trying to fix their own mechanics. And there's actually an equation where neither one of them really matter. So today, let's talk about footwork first. For Quarterback coaches who say it's just about footwork, in part, they're right. The big key to being able to throw from the pocket accurately, on time, with velocity, is being on balance to make the throw. Now, when we say it's all about footwork, people idealize this whole passing mechanic footwork idea in that it has to be a certain way, right? Wide base, never click the heels, always have your back foot loaded, all these things that you need as a quarterback in order to throw accurately with velocity. And yes, in a perfect world, in a vacuum, those things are truly important. But about 30% of your passes during a game are going to be from either a timing or rhythm throw where you hit five, stick your foot in the ground, and throw the ball. So you have to manipulate your balance, your, uh, the way you load that back foot, the way you release the football, drive off that hip. So that's on timing. That's maybe, maybe 30% of your passes during a game. The other 70 are going to come with some kind of movement or alteration to where you're going to be in the pocket, be it a pass rush, having to slide, having to move protection, trying to get back in behind a block, maybe on the run. And so from those, if it was just about perfect footwork, being on target and being accurate, then you could never be accurate because you're going to be off balance a lot of the times when you throw. The trick is understanding how to get to that balance point that you can load that back foot or front foot, depending on how you're throwing as well, if you're throwing on the run, and be able to get to a place where you can create torque, where you can create momentum, where you can keep on a linear path for accuracy, and where you can get your head and shoulders stable enough that you can throw with an accurate pass. And so when people talk about having to have perfect footwork, what is perfect footwork? So let's take a couple of quarterbacks across the years, and let's compare and contrast. Joe Montana, who 
as I was growing up in the game of football and for the last several years until recently, was considered the greatest quarterback in the history of the NFL, winning percentage, completion percentage, accuracy, all that stuff. Joe had phenomenal footwork in the pocket. He had a good solid base. He would hitch up in the pocket. He would get on rhythm and he would make his throws with excellent footwork every time. Joe was a slight bounce guy in the pocket. And so when he would hit back in the pocket, he'd have a little bounce to him and you'd see him doing that for his timing and for his rhythm before he released the ball. Back then we called it hitching into the pocket rather than sliding, but he was an on rhythm guy with a slight bounce. Let's contrast him to the guy who arguably took his title of greatest quarterback of all time, and that's Tom Brady. Now, Tom is a guy who loves to stand flat-footed in the pocket. That suits him. He can do it really well. He's accurate from it. He anticipates his throws, and as a result, he can be accurate. I start with these two guys because neither one of these guys have a huge cannon of an arm. Joe Montana probably had an average, I'd say an average arm for the NFL, not even close to average for today's NFL quarterbacks. But in his time, he had an average arm for NFL players. Tom Brady, for today's quarterbacks, actually has a below average arm. He doesn't compare to a Jared Goff or a Brett Favre or Patrick Mahomes, those kind of guys. Brady is arguably the best quarterback to ever play the game. His footwork is dead still. And so you would think if there was a perfect footwork, it would be Tom Brady's footwork. But Joe Montana, who was the best quarterback ever to play the game prior, had a slight bounce to his step. Well, now what if we insert Peyton Manning into that equation? Peyton was a guy who had what they call typewriter feet or pitter-pat feet, where you'd see his feet just go, and they'd fire rapidly like this and as he'd move his feet would move and he'd slide around the pocket with his feet moving like this as a quarterback myself I could never work that footwork it wasn't introduced to me it wasn't even a thing when I was playing Peyton Manning was pretty successful he had the pitter-pat feet so now we've talked about three different quarterbacks Joe Montana slight bounce Tom Brady dead flat and Peyton Manning pitter-pat or typewriter feet how can there be a perfect footwork and that's because there isn't a perfect footwork. There isn't, there's an ideal, depending on your coach, but there's a perfect scenario pre-throw. And the perfect scenario pre-throw is that we get that back foot loaded, we get our weight back, about 80% back on that backside, and we load everything up, then we drive off the glute, transfer that weight to the front foot. No matter how you get to that scenario, if you can get there on demand when you have a guy coming open into the throw, then you have good footwork. Now, there's a lot of things that you can get rid of, and I hate the guys that are really esoteric about it has to be one way because, as I just showed you, three great quarterbacks, three different styles of footwork. So you want it to work in the system with the coach that you're working with, but when I coach young quarterbacks, what I try to do is find the style of footwork that works for them. Some guys have super fast feet. They can move around, and they like keeping their feet moving, and that pitter-pat might work. Some guys don't have fast feet. And so standing flat-footed, but with anticipation, learning to read, being able to move, being loaded right, works for them. Other guys like to be in that rhythm of a slight bounce. I was a slight bounce guy myself. And so I understand that whatever works for them so that they can be accurate, on time, on target, and throw the ball with velocity, that's the perfect footwork for that quarterback. So let's dispel that myth of perfect. Now, let's talk about how you beat that equation of having to have your feet set, be on rhythm, all that stuff. There's one denominator that you either have it or you don't have it that beats all of that, and that is a strong arm. We talked about Manning. We talked about Brady. We talked about Montana. Peyton Manning now had a pretty strong arm, but Brady and Montana were less of an arm than the big arms today. Now let's talk about three guys that have huge arms, and that was Brett Favre, and that's Aaron Rodgers, and that's Jared Goff. So all three of those guys, different styles in the pocket. Rodgers, mechanically, is incredibly sound, but his footwork always is, isn't always exactly on target, on rhythm, and he, he can throw from 
any position. And that's because he's really good at throwing off balance, off foot. And it's also because he has a huge arm. Having a big arm, if you have it, it's a gift, allows you to be out of position and still make a throw oftentimes. Now, you still want to strive for perfect footwork, but you can be out of position, look sloppy at times, and still be deadly accurate. Aaron Rodgers is maybe the best natural thrower ever to play the game, and so he can throw from any position and be on target no matter what rhythm he's in. So the equation is, if you have a massive arm, footwork doesn't matter as much. Now, you should still strive to have the best possible footwork for your system. But a massive arm is a big game changer for quarterbacks. Jared Goff is a final. And I saw him throw a ball against the University of Arizona when he was in college. And this ball was an absolute laser shot down the field. And he was literally, he was getting so much pressure. I think it was an RPO, so he had a ton of pressure in his lap. And he was stepping backwards with his left foot, literally stepping behind him. That throw to me was physically impossible. I I don't know of any other quarterback that could have made that throw. But stepping away, falling away, as you're throwing a shot on a rope, about a 45-yard ball, all your momentum going back, ball going forward. So the huge arm is a huge difference maker. Your feet don't have to be as perfect. So think about that ratio. The stronger your arm, the less perfect your feet have to be. You should still strive for perfect, but the less perfect your feet have to be. The less strong arm you have, the more perfect your feet have to be. And so figure out which guy you are. That's a big key. If you're a strong arm guy, then you can get away with some throws off balance out of position sometimes. But if you don't have that huge arm, then you should really perfect footwork all the time, every day, work on that footwork and getting them right. And even if you do have the big arm, you should still work on that footwork. But you can get away with stuff with the bigger arm if your arm isn't so big. Get to work on your footwork and get it right. Remember, know who you are. Be that guy. Everybody should practice the oh shit throws because you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be off balance. You're going to have to throw off foot, out of position from different slots. But footwork is essential. It's more essential if you have a weaker arm. It's easier if you have a big arm. But everybody should work on it. Just thought I'd give you a some thought process there and a lot of free flow, free flow thinking in terms of my quarterback training today, but that's footwork in a nutshell. It's three different styles, a couple different ranges and an opportunity for you to improve your game. Appreciate you watching. Just wanted to give you some quarterback training, improve your football skills, help your game out and maybe make you a better player. Talk to you again soon.